Good afternoon. This is the tender of our Coronation Class locomotive, Princess Elizabeth, and our wonderful HM7000 ship has blown up. We're not the only ones, it seems. However, I used it enough to be able to tell you what, in my opinion, for myself, are the pros and cons. Now, taking price aside and forgetting it, the two most practical things, from my perspective, that make the HM7000 superb is this. Now, when you're using the Gauge Master and you're using a function, when you're using functions 1 to 9, that's absolutely fine. But when you're using 10 to 28, you have to press the shift button and from function 13, you can't see whether it's on or not. Now also, with the Gauge Master Prodigy, when you're using that, you've got to look at a list to see what your functions are. Now, with this, it's all in front of your eyes, it lists all the functions, you can see exactly what they are with the HM7000, it's all there in front of you. Absolutely fantastic as far as that is concerned. Now, the second thing which is superb from a practical point of view is, is CV values. So with the HM7000 in the app, you go to the CV values, it will show you exactly what they are. Now when you're using this, and you want to start at a CV value, you've no idea where the starting point is. Absolutely fantastic, as far as that is concerned. They are the two excellent pros from the HM7000 compared to the Gauge Master Prodigy. However, everything else you can do once you know how the systems work pretty easily. Now, what, what some people may see as a uh, con for the HM7000, I don't think it is. And I'll tell you for why. Smartphone. Now, Bluetooth connection. That's absolutely fine from your smartphone or device. However, if you play music in your model railway room or you use your Bluetooth to control other items, Bluetooth can only control one item at a time. The uh, HM7000 is not part of a Bluetooth hub controlling several items. So if you're controlling a locomotive and you want to turn your hi-fi down or whatever else, you cannot do it. Now the other thing is this which some may struggle with. That is an iPhone 7. Pretty common phone, but look at the size of the screen. That's a 14 Pro Max. Biggest iPhone you can get. Look at the size of the screen. Perfect. Now, iPad. you can see the difference. Now, do you really want to stare at a small screen on your phone to control your locomotives? That's fantastic. You can see that easily. However, do you really want to look at that, trying to control that, having that, having all that? And on that, absolutely easy. A doddle to see. Now, if you already have an iPad, absolutely fine. No extra cost incurred, perfect. Now, using your smartphone may be wonderful, but if you're somebody who gets a lot of texts, takes a lot of calls, running a TikTok channel, running a YouTube channel, you're soon going to drain your battery if you're running a Bluetooth app Plus, of course, you're running your loco and you've got all these things coming in, it's going to interfere with it. But if you already have an iPad, a good size iPad, then that's absolutely fine. But if you haven't, 
that might be another cost that you're going to incur with this system. Yes, there's no cost to have the app, but you might find that your phone screen isn't big enough or you don't want to use your phone because you're text messaging, you're doing this, that and the other. Some people I see texting and using TikTok, they're on their phones all the time. This would not be practical and I realise it's all subjective and everybody does what is right for them. But if you look and think, I don't want to use my phone and you don't have an iPad, then that might be, might be another cost. And I think they're about between 900, they, they, I don't know how much iPads cost, but a decent one with a good screen looking up to two and a half grand. I don't know what the cheapest is because I haven't bought one for a long time. So you could be looking at another cost there. So that's, that's, that's basically it really. Now, mine having blown up, Hornby was superb, the phone was answered straight away, I explained the situation, send it back, we'll send you another one. Now, I've had other decoders blow up that aren't Hornby. You know, we've all had things that go wrong. So I'm not going to be key, so keen to dismiss this because this can happen to anything. If I get two or three that come and they keep blowing up, then that's a different matter altogether and I will send it back. I didn't even get the chance to try it in digital. It ran for two or three minutes with the analog controller running with Bluetooth and that was it. End of. But that's basically it really. This absolutely superb but the HM7000 for CV values and seeing what the low codes does is far 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 superior. Far superior all day long. Anyway price yes is price differences as well however I don't know how much Hornby are going to charge for their locomotives that have got HM7000 fitted. So for argument's sake, if Hornby are going to charge 300 quid for a loco fitted with HM7000 and you can buy a locomotive, a Backman, I mean, I've paid 180 quid for a, diesel, a Backman diesel with sound, suddenly you get to 10 locomotives and, you're, and, and that's a thousand pounds and suddenly HM7000 isn't quite so cheap. So when people say it's a lot cheaper, I suggest it's worth you looking at the bigger picture and doing the maths and seeing what your long-term goals are for your model railway. Thank you for watching and I hope this has been of help. Thank you. What I forgot to add was I was going to put this chip into a class 8. But with the power bank or super capacitors, whatever you wish to call them, I couldn't see me being able to do it. I really couldn't. And on a Terrier, forget it. I think you're going to struggle to get the chip in on a Terrier. I haven't had one apart to try it. But I really think you are going to struggle big time. You really are. Uh, for coronation class locomotives, A1, A2s, A3s, anything with a tender... I think it's set piece. I don't think you know, I didn't have any trouble at all really. It was quite easy. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think with those locomotives you really need to have the power pack or super capacitors because they've got so many uh, pickups on them that I don't think you really need it. I just fitted it just to see what it was like. Anyway, again, thank you for watching and I hope this has been of help. Thank you.